Hey guys. All right. I just want to give a quick disclaimer to the following video and information about the GMC 2015 Silverado Denali that I put together a quick video segments about how to replace the magnetic ride control struts with standard struts and how to bypass the electronic system in it so that you don't turn on the lights. There's some very simple, easy ways to do it, but I must apologize. This was my first time to do a video, so the videoing itself isn't that great, but hopefully you get enough out of it. The main part in this is how to do uh, the resistor and the way I did it. Uh, there were some other videos on YouTube that were okay, and I appreciate the guys that did that. Uh, I found, I think, a little bit better way to do it. So I decided to put that. That's the main point. Because as far as just replacing the struts themselves, I put some ideas in there and showed you how to do it. But it's pretty standard, uh, very simple process. I just wanted to share how I did this and the process. So please forgive me for some of the bad videoing. It's my first attempt. Uh, I got to give a shout out to those guys that do those videos and it come out really good because it's a lot harder than it looks to do that. But I wanted to contribute something back because I've been able to use a lot of these uh, videos to help me with some of the projects I've been on. And I wanted to do something just to say thank you and hopefully this will help somebody. So with that, uh, if you'll just follow the next videos, I used a, my own video editor program and it's not that great uh, or it's great. I'm not. So please just... Uh, excuse the sudden changes from one section to another but if you'll just use it for information which is mainly what it's for anyway i think it'll really help you i appreciate it thanks guys and here's my contribution hey guys i uh, kind of decided to do a quick video on how to replace the struts on this 2015 chevy silverado 1500 with magnetic ride control i'm going to be doing later on in the video what if it works uh how to bypass the magnetic ride control and put standard struts on here so i just wanted to show on this particular vehicle if you look it's really easy to pull the struts out you can see the struts already on the floor you don't even have to take the suspension apart or anything none of this has to come apart you look up in here there's enough room once you take those nuts off you take the bolts off down there slide the strut that way drop it down and then pull it out through the top of the a-frame comes right out and when you put it back in you reverse it so stay tuned for the rest of this video and see what happens as far as uh, replacing the struts with a standard strut and i'm going to use a 25 watt 3 ohm resistor in the plug and i'll show you how i do that later and if it works this video will be on youtube okay quick update on this just want to show you guys there's some clips on this strut all you have to do is take these little things right here and just like a little screwdriver or something underneath and just pop them off real easy I'm trying to do this one-handed but anyway just get a screwdriver under here like this pop them off real carefully then you just slip them back on to the new strut over here I'll show them after they've been switched Okay, got another update for you. When I went to put this together, if you look, the new spring is obviously tighter. It hasn't settled, so as a result, I can't get the uh, strut on top of the lower control arm. So I am going to go ahead and have to disconnect the upper ball joint. So here's a way you can do that. Now before you disconnect the upper ball joint, I always disconnect all the lines. Get everything loosened up so you have plenty of room for that stuff to move so that when you're moving this spindle around you don't pull on any of these lines break an abs line or anything like that now the way you can get this loose is you just tap on this right here on the top just tap on that like this right in there on these ends eventually eventually that comes loose now i'm not going to make you watch me while i sit here and beat on that and you can use that same tip tapping here if you're going to remove a tie rod a lower ball joint or anything like that as well you just tap on this both sides and eventually it pops out quick easy simple you don't have to worry about trying to tear up this boot with a ball joint separator anyway all right be back for the next up. okay i figured out something on this other side right here if you slip the new strut up in there put it up in place tighten the nuts up there just barely snug to kind of hold the strut up out of the way and what you can do is you come up under here and you put a pry bar 
Sorry about all the jumping around. I'm not real good at this videoing stuff. All right, so you put a pry bar right up under here on this strut, right up under the base of it right there like that. You lift up and then take a hammer on the backside and gently tap it as you lift up, and it'll go right in place on top of the lower control arm. And you don't need to take any of that, all that other stuff up there. You don't need to take any of that off. Wish I'd figured that out on the other side, but a lot quicker. This side didn't take me less than a third of the time the other side did. But you just put it up under there, press, and then you can just tap it up on top the seat where you can see the strut sits up on top there. And then you just use the pry bar to kind of move it around so you line the holes up. Thought I'd uh, share that because it's a lot easier than the way I did it on the other side. Okay guys, here's an update on how I hooked up the resistor. What I did is I took the old plug and I cut it off the strut from up here and then just put some wiring ends on it. I used some heat shrink wrap to cover the ends and then put it on this. As you see this is a I used a 25 watt resistor because it can handle more power but it's 3 ohms of resistance. Uh, most of you probably electronic people know the amount of power doesn't matter it's just a matter of the resistance is the same. I did that so there's no chance of it hopefully overheating or having a problem in the future. So. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these little heat shrink wrap pieces right here, you can see, and I'm going to put those over the ends, and I was just going to heat shrink wrap that just to kind of cover it, keep it from coming off later, mainly just for dirt and corrosion resistance. So I'm going to take that, slip it over, and then melt it down. All right, I'll let you know if you're watching this, it means that uh, this worked and the lights didn't come on for the uh, magnetic ride control light. So anyway... I'll let you know how it works out. Wanted to, hello, I just wanted to show you the final uh, part of this. You see where it's heat shrink wrapped on there and ready to go. So now I'm going to plug it in. See what All right, I just installed the resistor. So as you can see, I just tie wrapped it up against the wiring harness and plugged it in to the factory plug, right? If I can show it right up in there where it connects it's actually see if I can get the light up in here where you can see it's actually right there I'm back in there there's a plug right there right here this plug this is the factory plug I just wired as you can see I just plugged it back in to the, to the factory harness with the wire off the strut now it's hooked up to the resistor theoretically it should tell the computer that everything's working so that it doesn't trip a light we'll see Okay guys, as you can see, here is the uh, driver's side. You can see where I wire tied the resistor just on top of the wiring harness. It's plugged into the factory plug. And it looks like it's going to work really good. I've started it earlier, no lights came on, so now I'm fixing to test drive it and make sure no lights come on. But I just wanted to show you how I ended up hooking up this side. As you can see, I used the uh, aluminum resistor with the uh, heat sink so it keeps it nice and cool. When I wire tied it, I didn't put them down too tight, just snug enough to hold it in place. Uh, again, so it dissipates the heat. I don't know if it's going to get too hot. More of you electronic guys can comment and see if it's going to get too hot. I don't think it is. It's not supposed to anyway. All right, I hope this helps you guys. Talk to you later.